Emily Goodwin here with Writers of the Future. We are talking to friends around the world. Today we have a special guest, William Joseph Roberts. Welcome. Thanks for having me tonight. Absolutely. It's great to have you. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I was born and raised in the hills of West Virginia in coal country down in Mingo and Logan County where I wrote a lot of stuff when I was little and growing up, but the problem I had was finding out how to write and the business of writing. And, you know, my English and literature teachers, they had no clue who to even contact to give me the information. And lo and behold, you know, like 25 years later, I'm finally doing it because I found the tribe. I found my people and I've learned how to go about the, this, the, uh, the art of writing and creating, you know, long works of fiction. Nice. And you mentioned earlier um, that you are part of a writing group or that you have a writing group. Yes. I run a writer's group here in Chattanooga, which is not like your normal um, writer's group. We do not critique. Um, I've labeled it more as a writer support group because the critique groups that I was in did nothing but spin wheels. Nobody progressed. This way, we're helping each other take the step up. We're helping each other to find out about anthologies and contests. And if somebody's got time, they can, they can jump in, they can critique somebody's work, but that's not the goal of the group. Also with the, uh, the writers group, I am uh, one of three members of Three Ravens Publishing, which was started in order to publish our labors of love that just, you know, nobody else wanted to pick up. The big boys didn't want, but stories need to be told regardless. Mm -hmm. So in conjunction with the publishing company and the writers group, we're putting out anthologies and little flash fiction pieces for the writers group just to help them get that leg up, get, get something on their writer resume. Mm -hmm. And we're going through and we're editing and, and putting all eyes on deck so that everybody can learn and grow from the marks and the, the blood that's being spilled on these pages. Um, to me, something like this is a community effort. It, it's not a solo gig. You just can't do it because you can't see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. um, so working together like this really helps everyone to, to take a, a step up and become better. Nice. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely one of the things that I find in just in writing community. I know in the sci-fi fantasy field for sure, but uh, it, it's a really a community thing. People want to help each other. You know, it's like we have a, a forum on Writers of the Future and people, I don't know if you've been on there before, but it's, you know, just everybody's there to help each other and encourage each other and they look at each other's stories. And Honestly, I was going through some of the videos for this interview segment and somebody mentioned the forum that I didn't know existed. And I actually signed up for it today. And lo and behold, Brad Thorgensen's on there. And he's like everywhere on the freaking internet. Yeah. I mean, anywhere you turn, he's there. <laughs> but, um, you know, I signed up for that. And, and honestly, I have been struggling for the last 20 years to find out how to write and how to do the business of writing. But three year, three and a half years ago, four years ago, I went to my first Liberty con here in Chattanooga mm. and there is where I met my tribe. And there is where I started to learn the actual business of writing and how to go about it, how to promote, how to talk to people. And, um, I, I I'm one of those people that have been labeled as a Jack of all trades. Mm. I have been so many things over the years. I mean, I'm, I'm an ordained minister. I'm, I've been a design engineer. I've an, I, I was an aircraft mechanic in a previous lifetime on F-15s. There's so many things under my belt. So, you know, and on top of that, I, I started my own little pirate radio station um, back in 09, I think it was. And it was just an internet radio station. It ended up burning a lot of time. I was nearly divorced. But in the process of it, I learned a lot about networking and how to talk to people and how to make contacts. That is now paying off mm -hmm. since LibertyCon and I, I've learned to talk to people. And 
out of those years of struggling, trying to find my path and find out how to do this thing that I love so much in those interviews that I did, because I ran the podcast as a starving artist podcast. Mm -hmm. I gave musicians and authors and poets a platform to share their works and share their labors of love. And one of my first interviews was with Ben Bova. Nice. And that man... He, he was nice enough. The first recording was crap. It didn't work. And he was nice enough to come back on. Let me re-interview him. Wow. And the one thing that he reiterated through the entire thing was, if you're going to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. And when I took the Writers of the Future course, that's one thing that really struck home with me. And I, I want to say it was Card that mentioned it during the course, that if you're going to do it, do it. Yeah. And, and it comes down to don't hem haw, don't beat around the bush, and don't joke yourself or kid yourself about it. Just do it. Yeah. And, you know, now I'm, my normal schedule is 0400, the alarm goes off, I get up, I make the coffee, and I sit down and I start writing. Wow. And so you mentioned the, the uh, Writers of the Future online workshop. So that's something that you recently took, right? Yes. Um, I don't know. I think it took me about a couple of weeks to get through because I got sidetracked with the life and then finally got back to it. Um, it reiterated a lot of stuff that I've been learning, talking to other authors, talking to publishers at the, the conventions I've been going to, especially Liberty Con. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the essays and the videos that, I think it was Tim Powers did the video on research. Right. Um, those really struck home a lot because I like to put a lot of realism in, in the pieces I'm doing, even if it's total fiction and way out there, I try to find something to connect it to possible readers so that they have some, some connection, some n nostalgia, something strikes them and they want to keep right on reading with it. You know, it, it becomes an emotional bond. Yeah. At least in my opinion. Um, so this, the whole segment on research, I, I wholly agreed on. Because you, you can't do enough research, but at the same time, you've got to mitigate falling down that rabbit hole of doom and never coming back out of it. Because one item turns into another, turns into, and you're just you're spending eight, ten hours researching when you should have been writing for that one little sentence you were doing. Yeah. Nice. And um, so, you know, we had, as you, as you observed, because you did the course, there was the three judges that uh, did the videos. We had David Farland, Orson Scott Card, and Tim Powers, and you mentioned already Orson Scott Card. In fact, you mentioned earlier Ben Bova. Ben Bova was actually a judge also for Writers of the Future. Uh, he was early on, wasn't he, back in the early 80s? Yeah, yeah, he was. Okay. He was uh, one of the early ones. But anyhow, so uh, how was it getting that one-on-one -on -one from the three, uh, you know, literary giants? I found myself asking questions. And if it was a one-on-one -on -one and we were sitting at the bar at a con, mm -hmm. it would have been all night. I'd have been buying them drinks and just let's chat. <laughs> but a lot of the questions I was initially having, they did answer by the end of the course. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you know, it just, it took time to get through uh, the material. Sure. Um, I, I couldn't tell you how many people I've already shared it with and told about because it, it was worthwhile. If nothing else, it's a refresher. Yeah. It, it, it brings back all the stuff that you've already learned. And sometimes we get sidetracked and we forget and we get off on our little tangents and it'll bring us back center and bring us back in alignment, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how about the essays? Uh, how were those for you? The essays were extremely enjoyable and probably the most surprising thing to me was how similar the 1930s were to now. Mm -hmm. um, which I still, it, it baffles me how you would set and write a hundred thousand words in that time period by hand or on a typewriter versus on a computer. I know. That, that, that is a true labor of love right there. The, the amount of time spent doing their works. Um, but even L. Ron Hubbard mentioned in uh, one of the essays, 
you go out and you research and you find these people. Um, what was it? It was a, I can't remember. He was talking about one of the stories he was working on with a, a Coast Guard cutter. And it was, the original one was just crap and he hated it and nobody liked it. And he went back and he actually went and talked to um, the captain or a bosun or somebody on board a Coast Guard cutter and got the information from them about how it all actually works. Then he struck those emotional chords with the, the readers and was able to pull them in. Yeah. You know, and, and so just preaching to the choir to me. I mean, it's all stuff that I've already heard or read and it just reinforces everything that I've learned to this point. Nice. Well, and if you, if you wind up uh, winning the writers of the future contest and come out to Hollywood, then you will have, you know, there's a lot more of that. And also, you know, you mentioned sitting in the bar with those uh, contest judges and, and authors. Well, I mean, that's what they do every day when they're out here. I mean, it's like a week long, you know, you have a lot of time with them. So hopefully the uh, workshop, you know, polished up whatever you need so that um, your stories take it to the next level and, you, you know, win the contest. That would be uh, that would be awesome. I ain't going to complain about that. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right. So from what I understand, you have a couple of books out already. So, so, uh, what do you got? Um, let's see. Uh, well, I actually have two of them with me. My first novel, Flux Runners, which I self published through, uh, Three Ravens Publishing. Space opera comedy, um, take a little bit of every sci-fi TV show and movie that you've ever loved slap it together and you you pretty much got flux runners <laughs> um i probably like a little element of comedy too much i don't like serious fiction and i've been asked to enter or to write some um serious military sci-fi and i i have a hard time even coming up with an idea because it's just it's not fun yeah and that, that's one thing that I, I love is fun fiction adventures you know like indiana jones and alan quartermain and Mm -hmm. I, well, the the old epics of like um, uh, Robert Howard with Conan and Solomon Kane. Yeah. You got epic stories that 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 can rival the epic of Gilgamesh or Beowulf or even the Odyssey. But for whatever reason, you know, I've I've been influenced by so much slapstick comedy, Three Stooges, Tom and Jerry, not to mention Hitchhiker's Guide and Douglas Adams. Yeah. yeah. So that that finds its way in and it weaves in. Good. Um, but my second one was the most serious thing that I've done so far. Uh, Widowmakers. It is a World War II alt history, military uh -huh. members fighting mythological creatures on the battlefield. Um, released through Canon Publishing. It's the first book in the series. Oh, Widowmakers is a Dragon Award or was uh, nominated for a Dragon Award. Oh, really? So I don't know where the voting is going to go with it, but it was nominated for, for all history. Well, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I saw that they were going to do the Dragon Awards still this year. They're going to do it virtually, but they're still planning on doing the Dragon Awards. So, wow. Good luck on that. Yep. And so fingers crossed. I mean, I, these are my first ones and I just started like last November. Wow. Good for you. Oh, so officially I started last November, but, uh, and now I got a nominated novel uh, that's pretty cool that's awesome yep and um right now i am wrapping up the edits on my third novel wildcat which will be a uh, part of the fallen world series by christopher woods that's published through chris kennedy publishing post-apocalyptic if you ever played any of the fallout series mm -hmm. you would love reading this series because that's the type of world that it's in all right uh, uh and then Christopher Woods and myself, actually, I was working on this just before we got on here. I was wrapping up uh, the last chapter that I had to, before I sent it back to, to Woods. We're working on a collaboration called Smuggler's Run. And this is the epitome of all those stereotype B-rate cheesy sci-fis that we grew up with, like Ice Pirates and, and The Last Starfighter and, and Spaceballs. Yeah. Yeah. And we have so many tropes and Easter eggs spackled across this thing. Uh, the, the initial short story was released in um, Through the Gate, a um, salvage system 
anthology through Chris Kennedy Publishing, uh, Salvage System and Salvage Title. That's all uh, Kevin Steverson's universe. And um, everyone loved the short story sidekicks that we had submitted. And if you like stupid humor, you know, Stifler and Stifler's mom and that kind of crap, you, you're going to laugh through this whole thing. So I'm warning you now, don't drink anything if you read any of it. <laughs> um, it doesn't need I, it. No, no. Um, well, I've got a couple of shorts out in some other anthologies, Shida Toys, um, When Valor Must Hold, which was a fantasy one. I, I wrote a fantasy piece akin to something Robert Howard would have wrote. And most people that read it thought, that was the first, the first comment that I got about it was this is something that Howard could have put out. And that to me, I, I grew up, well, finding Conan was hard in uh, Southern West Virginia. And when my mom didn't burn things like that, um, I actually got to read and, and enjoy the adventure stories. Oh yeah. So to, to have somebody say that my piece was something that Howard could have put out was just amazing. You know, it, it, it brought tears to my eyes. What a compliment. And so where could somebody find some of the, you've, you've shown us several so far and um, I understand you have a website, so can they find them on your website and can they find them elsewhere? Um, well, you can find all of my stuff on Amazon. Um, everything so far that I can think of has been linked onto my webpage, which is williamjosephroberts.com. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, MeWe, Instagram, YouTube. Um, so I put myself everywhere that I possibly could. Well, good on you for putting yourself out there and making yourself known. That's definitely, you know, the more you get your work out there, the more readers you'll get and word of mouth hopefully takes off and, and yeah. And so what's your next project? Um, well, as soon as I get Wildcat wrapped up and Smuggler's Run finished, probably the next thing would be to finish either the kids book I have planned for my Flux Runners universe or knock out Flux Runners 2. Okay. And you currently have a submission in with Writers of the Future, right? Uh, yes. I have one in for the third quarter and the fourth. Nice. Well, good luck with that. Which, um... While going through the course, I actually utilized what was in the course to tweak up those stories before I submitted them. Perfect. Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, that was kind of one of the purposes of the course is you have all these people entering the L100% Writers of the Future contest, and then some people are like so close to winning and, uh, you know, they want to come out and get the workshop. So we took some of those basics from that workshop, put them online, and hopefully that just pushes them to the next level and um you know we're we we'll see what um, happens. one thing i do want to mention uh card had said i don't remember which segment segment it was in um he was talking about show and tell oh yeah and you know we, we were preached so much to show it don't tell it mm-hmm but sometimes you just got to tell it because otherwise you're stuck stagnant trying to show every little thing to get to this one freaking point. Well, just tell it real quick and then here you are and now you get onto the action, you know? Yeah. So, you know, if you see him in passing or something, thank him, tell him yes. And all these other, I, I have had a um, rigmarole between literary and pulp. Because the Chattanooga Writers Guild, they are primarily literary writers. And their style and sense of things is totally different from fantasy and sci-fi writers. And I couldn't understand why they were telling me everything was so wrong with what I was doing when I could pick up Tolkien or Robert Jordan or, or even Card. It's mm -hmm. like, well, it's right here. But that's not how you do it. <laughs> it's right here. You know? So thank him for me. I will. Good. All right. So, William, from you're in Chattanooga right now. I, I'm actually in Chickamauga, Georgia. We're oh, okay. 15 minutes south of Chattanooga. Okay. Yeah. Every time you say Chattanooga, I think of the song. The uh, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the only thing we're known for, really, is the song. <laughs> Chattanooga, choo choo. 
Yeah. <laughs> Which the choo-choo is actually over there. They, they have the train. Really? Oh, man. Yeah. It, it, it's awesome. over the choo-choo complex if they haven't sold it now. Uh, oh, I hope not. Um, that's where LibertyCon held their convention for years until they started selling off some of the property. Wow. Hopefully it's still there. All right. Well, so once again, um, tell me your website. Uh, WilliamJosephRoberts.com. Okay. Great. And, well, what? Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, MeWe, YouTube, Instagram. That's the other one. For anybody listening, look him up. Check out his website. You can also find the uh, Writers of the Future workshop and contest both at writersofthefuture.com. We also mentioned the forum. That's also there at writersofthefuture.com. So, William, thank you so much for chatting today. It's been it's great to meet you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.